What do a dog, a teacher, federal employees, and doctors all have in common? Have you thought about it? Well, they all have fake degrees from diploma mills. While thousands of people have thousands of dollars of debt spent years of their lives studying and suffered through final weeks to gain higher degrees, others have simply paid a one-time fee, listed their resume, and bam, they have a master's degree or even a PhD. And yes, even the dog. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're gonna be diving deep into the world of degrees and diploma mills. These companies make millions of dollars selling legitimate looking degrees to people in lieu of actual education. While it may not seem so bad at first glance, there are multiple reasons why it is a dangerous and frankly insulting practice. There are multiple people breaking their backs to get higher degrees while others simply pay a quick lump sum to get theirs. Even worse, a lot of people have really serious jobs that they were able to gain through these fake degrees. I don't know about you, but I really don't want my doctor to have any of their degrees by just paying a fee and sending in their resume. So what is the extent of the situation and what, if anything, is being done about it? Well, let's get into it. In the United States, some federal employees are the lucky recipients of advanced degrees with their tuition paid courtesy of the US federal government. It's an opportunity a lot of people hope for, and it seems like a fairy tale dream. Having your degree paid for while the United States currently has a student loan debt of over $1 trillion is something that would change countless people's lives. For some federal employees, these dreams do come true. However, when you look deeper into some of these people's supposed education, something seems a little, well, off. One employee with the federal government had gotten his supposed master's degree from LaSalle University. And no, I'm not talking about the one in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's completely different and way less prestigious. Let's just say it hasn't earned the title university at all, but I'll get to that. He received his diploma after paying $5,000 for the supposed school. Just for the record, the national average for a master's degree was roughly $10,000 or more at the time. So he definitely seemed to get a bargain there, but you get what you pay for. Instead of attending years of classes and writing a thesis, you know, the normal method, the man spent no time in a lecture hall, never took a test, never even got any grades. So what exactly did he do to earn his degree and therefore his career and salary? Well, he paid $5,000 for it and that's about it. He even described his degree as a joke. And that's great because that's exactly what I wanna hear from a federal employee. Another employee who worked for the NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration, said that they had received a PhD in engineering administration in 1985 from Columbia Pacific University, an unaccredited school. He had at least completed some courses from an accredited school beforehand, but never finished his dissertation. However, to earn his degree, he didn't have to complete any additional coursework or attend any classes. Later, the school he had received his degree from was actually forced to close down after it failed to meet various requirements for issuing PhD degrees, awarded excessive credits based on life experience, and failed to employ duly qualified staff. This is the exact type of education you think of when you think of federal employees, right? No? Yeah, me neither. So why was the federal government paying for these? Well, theoretically, the government is legally allowed to pay tuition or tuition reimbursement for employees that went to a school certified by a recognized accrediting body. All this really means is that a special agency has looked over a school's practices and procedures and determined that they were, in fact, teaching things to their students, holding exams, paying for their employees, things like that. I say theoretically because in 2004, it was discovered that the federal government hadn't always been sticking to its own rule. Under the suggestion of a Senator, the Government Accountability Office opened an investigation on some of the degrees that had been paid for by the government and found that not everyone had received degrees from accredited schools. As it turns out, a plethora of employees had received their degrees from diploma mills. Diploma mills can be described as unaccredited schools, though that's not entirely an accurate word, and they sell degrees. Degrees can be awarded to students in a number of ways, usually with little to no coursework. Some people can even get an experience degree, which just means that they're awarded credit hours for life experience. Like, what does that even mean? Is experience working in a restaurant enough for a hospitality degree? I know a lot of people that have self-diagnosed or diagnosed their friends with mental illnesses with absolutely no training. Is that enough for a psychology degree? What exactly counts as adequate life experience in this case? As you may have unfortunately guessed, the first two examples I just gave come from those that have gotten their degrees from these infamous diploma mills. I have to agree with that one guy and say that they are most definitely a joke. But for most people, these fake diplomas are no joking matter. 
Diploma mills have actually been around since the 1800s, and one of the first documented comments on them came from the former United States Commissioner of Education, John Eaton, who called them a disgrace to American education. And I gotta agree with you there, Mr. Eaton. Obviously, diploma mills present a massive problem, especially when these experience type degrees are handed to people with really important federal jobs, like those in the Department of Justice and Treasury. You know, the same people who help decide how the country runs and make serious decisions that not only impacts countless individuals, but society as a whole, those kinds of jobs. According to the GOA report, federal agencies paid unaccredited diploma mills over $160,000 in tuition fees. Of course, when I say federal agencies, I really mean that technically the taxpayers, we paid for it. The investigators found that 28 high-ranking employees had degrees from diploma mills and over 400 employees in total. Now, let me just once again, point out just how awful this is. Not only were these people able to get incredibly high ranking jobs with their fake degrees, but their degrees were paid for by the government. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to even get their tuition paid for. And instead of taking the opportunity to go to an actual university, these people took the easy way out and chose, you know, quick, easy, no work required degrees. There are people that have worked their tails off and get no such opportunities, no important government job, no tuition reimbursement. This whole situation is so incredibly infuriating. However, they stated that the issue could have been much more pervasive than what they found. The report reads in part, several factors make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to determine the extent of unauthorized federal payments for degrees issued by unaccredited schools. Apparently, it was so impossible for the investigators to know the extent of the issue because as it turns out, the federal government is actually terrible at record keeping, which, surprise. The agencies seem to have every excuse in the book for not being able to turn over information to Goa. Some of them said they just simply didn't have any of the records. Others claimed that they had no way to differentiate academic training from other training in their accounting systems. Agencies also told Goa investigators that they just didn't know if tuition reimbursement paid through credit cards had been captured in its training payment records. Am I the only one that feels like this is just a hair sketchy? The federal government can't produce financial records for their own employees. It just seems odd. Well, here's an idea. Maybe they should keep track of it a little better. Just saying. Now, from there, it just got more sketchy. Apparently, when these diploma mills were contacted by the Goa investigators, they revealed that they had changed their charging fees exclusively for the federal government to make it seem like they had been charged per course. Since no one was actually taking any classes, this is extremely sneaky of them. And if we're being honest, of the federal government as well. In response to the Goa investigation results, the federal government said they will be paying more attention to where federal funds go for higher education. However, there will be no repercussions for the multiple agencies that were found to have funded diploma mill degrees. So there were no true incentives here to be more careful with where funding is going. I'm not saying this is happening still, but it's entirely possible that people with diploma mill degrees are actually still getting jobs with federal offices and still getting their tuition reimbursed. Diploma mills have been around four centuries, but they have absolutely exploded over the last two decades, exceeding sales of over $500 million a year. While the fact that federal employees got these fake degrees paid for and provided by the government is especially infuriating, it just gets worse from here. And I mean, it happens in all professions all the time too. The professions that some of these people holding fake degrees are involved in would actually shock you because it certainly shocks me. They can range from doctors to teachers to even a mayor. I mean, getting these fake degrees is so easy that even a dog has one. And I'm not kidding. A dog named Chester from Vermont was awarded a master's in business administration. So now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should go to one of these diploma mills and get a degree for Casper. I don't know what he'd get a degree in. I don't know if he'd be good at business administration, but I don't know, he seems like, I think he could get a degree in hospitality, maybe HR. He's a really good negotiator for treats. So, you know, that could be an opportunity for him. But back to Chester. With the help of his human buddies who just wanted to see how easy it was to get a degree from a diploma mill, Chester submitted his resume and $499 to Rocheville University. And a week later, he had a package that consisted of a distance MBA diploma, two sets of college transcripts, a certificate of distinction in finance, and a certificate of membership in the student council. I seriously doubt that Chester was a member of a damn student council, especially at a school that has no actual students and therefore no need for a student government. He also apparently earned a 3.19 GPA, a dog, 3.19 GPA for an MBA. While I imagine Chester in a little graduation cap and gown would have been adorable, a dog clearly did not complete the work to earn any of these things. So what does this tell you about the humans with these degrees? 
In 2017, the extent of people touting fake degrees for real professions was uncovered and published by the unlikeliest of sources, high school journalists, which good job. It all started when they stumbled upon some illegitimate credentials from none other than their own principal. With just a little bit of research and some good old fashioned journalistic detective work, the students uncovered that their principal, Amy Robertson, had obtained both master's and doctorate degrees from a Corlins University. The only problem was that the university didn't exist according to the Department of Education. She also had taken a commencement photo from Wake Forest University to prove her legitimacy, a university she never attended. Shortly after they released their groundbreaking report, their principal resigned, walking away from her $93,000 salaried position. And as a side note, gazooks, is that what they're paying principals nowadays? My God. This type of situation is so pervasive that a study published in 2007 found that one in six education doctorates are fraudulent. But it's not just education doctorates that are the problem, it's fake medical doctorates too. In 1984, the New York Times reported that six people, three of which were medical doctors, were arrested for possessing fraudulent medical degrees. Reportedly, those indicted were serving their residencies and had paid as much as $20,000. Reportedly, no patients were injured by any of these so-called doctors, but someone practicing medicine who never actually went to medical school did no studies, no research, and no work is dangerous. As you may have guessed, there are unfortunately instances where people have been hurt by doctors with fake medical licenses. In the late 2000s, two men were arrested for manslaughter in North Carolina after they had purchased their medical credentials for a mere $100. They had been selling substances online and giving medical advice to people with actual health concerns. John Baer, a co-author of the book Degree Mills, the billion dollar industry that has sold over a million fake diplomas, told CBS News that the pair of men had cure all substances they sold online. They took a young girl off insulin, put her on their potion and she died. And this is exactly why diploma mills are so dangerous, especially with the internet. It's entirely possible for people to receive a fake doctorate and give factual false medical advice to unsuspecting patients. This isn't just with medical doctors. It could be from a psychologist, therapist, educator, or literally anyone. These people are giving advice without any education on it, and it could be detrimental and even life-threatening to their customers and patients. It's disgusting. Then in 2018, it was discovered that a mayor, a whole ass mayor, Mel Girade from Temple Terrace, Florida had been lying about her degrees. She had spent many years obsessively labeling herself as a proud doctor with an email address that read, ask Dr. Mel. Her car's license plate even said Dr. Mel at one point. She listed her PhD in psychology all over her resume and web bios. The only problem, you guessed it. The degrees she was oh so proud of were from LaSalle University, a notorious diploma mill. Her biography on the city website said she had earned her PhD from the University of Illinois, which was obviously a lie. When asked about it, she said that this was a city error and said, I know what my bio is and what I give people. I hate to break it to you, former Mayor Mel, but your bio says you're a fraud, just saying. She had been given 12 graduate credits for life experience, but reportedly completed work amounting to 20 hours of study. According to her, those 20 hours were mostly writing papers and having them graded, no classes or tests. She claimed that she had defended a dissertation, but others reported that they had no recollection of any presentation. Once again, her degree is fraudulent. As you may expect, she stepped down. In 2021, after a senior affairs employee in Albuquerque, New Mexico was fired for possessing a fake degree, some students spoke out. They told KRQE News that they would be furious if someone was picked over them for a job because of a fake degree. Others said it was frustrating that they spent money and went to countless difficult classes while others just bought their degrees online. And they're right. The average student in 2021 paid roughly $38,000 at private schools, 10,000 at public schools in-state and 27,000 for out-of-state in a year. They also spent roughly four or more years completing tiring class requirements to get their diploma. Meanwhile, people who already have economic advantage purchase fake degrees to make it easier to get a job or a raise. And honestly, it's bullshit. It's even more infuriating when you think about just how easy it is for people to get jobs with fake degrees and how often it happens. How do so many people with fake degrees get these really important, really education oriented type jobs? Well, first of all, employers apparently don't actually do a lot of background research on the people they employ. You know, those really long applications we've all filled out that say exactly what's on our resumes? Well, apparently people don't do a lot of fact checking on those. According to research done by the Society for Human Services, which has been summarized by Get Education, only about 34% of employers check the educational qualifications listed on resumes. 
As if that isn't bad enough, they also found that 25% of people inflated their educational achievements. And that's a lot of people lying about their education and a lot of companies not double checking. Obviously, this can make for some sticky situations like those I've already mentioned. Even if employers do double check a prospective employee's degree, it can be hard to tell what is from an accredited university and what isn't. Why? Well, as you may have guessed, these diploma mills are quite sneaky. They aren't sitting around with a giant billboard saying, hey, we're a fake school. Of course not. Instead, they actually accredit themselves through their own accreditation agencies, ones that are literally made just to confuse people. So they're really good at hiding that they are not actually real universities with real classes, tests, and grades. So they just keep going and they just keep scamming people with these degrees. Even worse, only 12 states in the United States have laws on the books about using unaccredited diplomas. So the only real risk in doing this is being found out, likely fired and ruining your reputation, but that's it. There are cases where the punishment is more strict, but those are rare. For the companies who do hire these people, on the other hand, the risk is far greater. First off, they can lose money. Like the federal government, some companies offer tuition reimbursement to their employees. If it turns out a person got their tuition from a diploma mill that causes a loss of a few thousand dollars and an additional cost for the company to hire and retrain someone new, that sucks for the company. Also, it doesn't look super great for companies to have hired someone with a diploma mill degree if the news is spread that one of their employees never actually completed a real education. It could cost the company's reputation and their customers or even their current employees to look at them a little sideways. I mean, I'm definitely looking at the school that hired the principal with no real degrees with some sort of judgment here. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, how did you not double check that? Then of course, there's the risk of lawsuits. Say a hospital hires someone with a fake degree. Say that person hurts someone or doesn't respond to a medical emergency accurately. That person that got hurt will likely sue the hospital for malpractice. So it's definitely in the company's best interest to keep an eye out. Still, they don't seem to, and I don't understand why they don't. But with little risk and high reward for both people in the diploma mill industry and those purchasing them, there seems to be no reason to stop other than the morality of it all. And we know that's not the motivator we'd think it would be. After all, they do make a lot of money doing it. Still, people have been trying to spread the news about this massive scam and uncover the true stories of diploma mills for decades. But before we start to unravel how diploma mills have been investigated and discovered, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. At the end of what can feel like an endless workday, the last thing I wanna do is cook dinner. But when your fridge and freezer is empty, the urge to order in and skip cooking happens all too often. But thanks to Daily Harvest, I don't have that takeout temptation anymore. Daily Harvest helps me keep my freezer fully stocked with options that are delivered right to my door and are delicious, nourishing, and ready in minutes. And I've spoken for a long time on how Daily Harvest probably is one of my favorite companies ever to work with and obviously to consume their product because I am in love with their smoothies. And they have a ton of available products, including harvest bowls, soups, flatbreads, snacks, smoothies, of course, lattes, and their newest one, Harvest Bakes. And with Daily Harvest, I never have to question if the food I'm eating is good for me. They create food that's good for my health and the health of the planet. By supporting farmers who invest in practices that increase biodiversity and improve the health of our soil and delivering foods in recyclable and compostable packaging, Daily Harvest does the work, so all you have to do is eat. So avoid the takeout temptation and get Daily Harvest. Make sure you go to dailyharvest.com slash casket to get up to $40 off your first box. Again, that's dailyharvest.com slash casket for up to $40 off your first box. dailyharvest.com slash casket. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by the big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, well, where's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service for over a year and a half now, it makes really clear sense. There is none. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. And it really just all makes sense. I've used them, like I said, for over a year and a half, and I don't have any problems with calling, texting, using data on my phone, browsing TikTok, social media, whatever the heck it is. They've got me covered and it there's no difference really. I just don't pay like an absurd amount of money per month anymore. So for anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. They give you the best rate, whether you're buying for one or for a family. And at Mint, families start at just two lines. All plans will come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And of course, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts, or you can switch it all up. 
So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. That's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. In the early 1980s, multiple government entities completed thorough investigations on the prevalence of diploma mills within the United States. It was called Operation Diploma Scam or Operation Dip Scam. In the three year long investigation perpetrated mostly by the FBI, 39 illegitimate schools were shut down after it had been discovered that they were selling fake academic credentials to people for a fee. In addition to shutting down the schools, Operation Dip Scam led to 20 convictions. But keep in mind, this was before the internet was even a thing. So most of this was done over the phone. Since the boom of the World Wide Web, this issue has only become more pervasive. Wired reported in 2004 that the Justice Department can only list five people who were indicted since the first operation. Considering the severity and growth of the industry, this is definitely concerning. However, others have pushed to see what more can be done in response to the scam. In 2002, a physics professor, George Golan, was simply working in his office when ads from diploma mills started to pop up on his screen. After weeks of these ads appearing, he finally decided to call the number listed on them and came to a shocking revelation about the world of diploma mills. As he sat on the phone, he listened as a sales representative pitched him degree options from Parkwood University. During the call, he was told that for $4,400, he could supply a PhD in systems engineering. At first, Golan was simply amused by the idea that this man was offering him, a person whose credentials he was completely unaware of, a PhD for the bargain price of $4,400. But as he kept digging, he found the issue was much worse than he thought. He came across news that a forensic psychologist had actually purchased their degree. It was at this moment that he decided something had to be done about the issue. He told Wired, here's this person who's untrained doing therapeutic interventions. I thought, Jesus, this is really bad. After spending time discovering more and more about the world of diploma mills, Golan decided to post an extensive list of the fake companies on his school website. Then he began running his own experiments. He began applying to these schools and found just how easy it was to get fake degrees. At one diploma mill called St. Regis, he took a 100 question multi-choice quiz. He purposefully answered 79 of the questions incorrectly and was still told that his source could be translated to an improbable 2.7 grade point average, qualifying him for an associates of arts degree. What would he have gotten if he had gotten all the questions right? Masters, maybe a doctorate? Over the next few years, Goland would compile an extensive report on diploma mills, only to be ignored by federal regulators and pressured by his university to stop. But finally, after news broke that auto workers had been enrolled in St. Regis by their companies, Golan saw his chance. When a member of the Indiana Commission on Proprietary Education went on TV to explain that they couldn't go after St. Regis because it was in Africa, Golan stepped in. He got on the phone and said, they're not in Africa, they're in Spokane. You should ask the Attorney General of Washington to prosecute. And that's exactly what they did. And after multiple sting operations, they discovered that Dixie Randock and her husband had developed a diverse network of players, university names, mailing addresses, domain names, and ISPS for their diploma mill. After the completion of the investigation, the Randocks pled guilty to conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud. Victorious, Golan put Randock's prison numbers on his university door in celebration. But he still continues to assist in investigations and has become a respected expert on diploma mills. He told CNN in 2010 that setting up a degree mill is simply a matter of creating a website that looks like it belongs to a genuine university. From there, people merely need a way to take money from their customers and a system of people who would take calls from employers trying to verify their degrees. That's it. It's just that simple. He also told CNN that he believes some people were victims of degree mills, but asserts that most people likely knew they're paying for a fake degree. He said, anyone who's had any contact with a real college curriculum knows how hard you have to work. If you can get a whole PhD over the course of one week and you don't know that's not legitimate, then you're just dumb. Others like Golan have also tried to shine a light on this problem. A former FBI agent, Alan Ezel and John Baer, experts on diploma mills and writers of the book, again, Degree Mills, the billion dollar industry that has sold over a million fake diplomas, have spent years investigating the inner workings of diploma mills. In a piece written by the two in UTNE, they describe the life of an average diploma mill salesperson. In Romania, Nicholas spent his days selling diplomas for around $1 an hour. Obviously this isn't a lot, but in a country that is economically depressed, he told Ezel and Bear that he was just glad to have a job. The office manager on the other hand, earned an average of $150,000. Not in a month, not in a year, but in a day. In total, he was making around $50 million a year, all just from selling fake degrees online. Much of the sales came from telemarketer type phone calls where people like Nicholas follow a script that goes something like this. 
I'm a registrar with the university degree program. I apologize for my European accent. We just wanted to contact you to tell you that because we have some spaces left in our program, we reduced our registration fee by more than $2,000. What I'm going to tell you is very important. So if you don't understand everything I say, just let me know. If now is a good time for you, I'll explain our new program and answer any questions you might have. Then once he gets a bite, he sells off degrees accompanied by transcripts and degree verification service. It really is that simple. Just like that, Nicholas made his employers a couple thousand more dollars. Ezel and Bear write that after participating in multiple government investigations and roundtables to discuss the issue, they have become increasingly pessimistic. Despite people largely knowing about this, not much is actually being done to stop it. And with higher education just getting more inaccessible and expensive, the issue is just continuing to grow. So with that being said, employers and prospective students need to be adamant when verifying a university or education history. Just by researching for this episode, I came across hundreds and hundreds of schools offering quick and easy diplomas. They advertise openly on Google and claim complete legitimacy, but it's incredibly important to be wary of these advertisements. So how do you spot a diploma mill when you see one? Well, there's a lot of information that can be accessed on these schools running the scam. Websites like degreeinfo.com and degreediscussion.com compile lists of schools that have been reported to have illegitimate credentials and are believed to be diploma mills. Government websites, including those in Michigan and Oregon, also provide up-to-date lists on the current running diploma mills. Additionally, be on the lookout for the tactics I've mentioned throughout the episode. A legitimate accredited school will not offer credits based on life experience. If someone is offering you a degree after a simple quiz, that's a red flag. If someone calls you offering a degree without knowing anything about your background, they're likely a diploma mill. If the tuition is substantially lower than the national average, you guessed it, it's likely a diploma mill. I think you get the point here. Multiple websites also have lists of accredited universities. So if you don't see your prospective school on the list, run. Of course, that's just for people looking for a college education. How can employers ensure that they aren't hiring someone with a fake degree? First, they can look through a list of verified accredited universities and check the prospective employee's background based on that list. If someone applying to a job has skipped any steps like going from a bachelor's to a doctorate, that's probably something that needs to be looked into. If someone presents a degree with spelling errors or a printed school seal instead of raised, then that's probably not a great sign either. If they earn degrees at a rapid pace, like three in one year or something along those lines, that's also probably an issue. These steps can be used by any average citizen as well if you wanna look into your doctors, teachers, principals, or whoever. With the ever-growing stories, you can never be too careful. These fake degree scams are becoming a huge issue in the United States and are dangerous for employers and citizens alike. Their presence is also a huge slap in the face to the people who have spent years of their life gaining their education. At the moment, not much seems to be done to actually stop this problem from growing and deter people from starting a diploma mill or paying for their degrees. It's just too easy and they make too much money with little to no consequences to stop. Something has to change. But unfortunately for us in this current day and age, and at least where we stand as of recording this, that's not really on the table or a priority for really anybody, it seems. So with all of this being said and a very lackluster conclusion, that is where I'm ending today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new, especially obviously about diploma mills. Maybe you wanna get your pet a PhD, who knows? But you know, if you do, let me know. I really appreciate you spending some of your time here with me today and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye.